to all intents and purposes, I think uh, the, the league table will finish. And I think, uh, Stevie, if, if Telford win tonight and Swindon out, I think they've got the league title, haven't they? Yeah, they just need one point, I think, tonight. But like I say, it's in context of what's going on, this is uh, not really important with all the people that are at risk and stuff like that. But like I say, I think Swindon and Peterborough, me personally, I think they are the two best teams. But Telford have just been really consistent this year, and that's what's got them the league, really. So uh, the Phantoms and the Wildcats line up like you can see on your screen. And the Wildcats being led out by Rennie Marr, number 30. And they, of course, are wearing their road jerseys, that bright red. Uh, lots of familiar faces for us, of course. We've seen these players here in Peterborough and down in Wiltshire so many times, but uh, they are backed by a, a solid netminder and talent in abundance going forward, including, of course, Aaron Nell and uh, Tyler Van Cleef, Bebris and number 89, uh, Malasinski. And uh, the, the Wildcats chase it onto the boards. Oh, dear me. Goal and uh, Eddie Bebris absolutely free as a bird, given the freedom of the city of Peterborough. And uh, he rattles one in, the wrister sees the puck in the back of the net. So the Wildcats get the early marker, but uh, dear me, um, the, uh, the uh, defensive position there is uh, very poor from the Phantoms' point yeah, of view. You can see they've got two deep guys and a, and a, a centerman behind the net and Bebris is wide open. Like I say, uh, he's not going to miss chances like that, is Eddie. Pass into from left to right and caught by Bowring uh, on the uh, on the helmet. Van Cleef turns, shoots and finishes. Uh, so Tyler Van Cleef all the way around the goal. Not the wrap down, low down. He goes to the high slot and whistles one in. Yeah, well this is the thing. If we're gonna, if we're not gonna make contact and we're just gonna make it like an exhibition game, we will get absolutely hammered because Swindon have got. Lots of quality and their players don't like people getting in the face and like I say, he just wheeled on the high slot there and just shot really low on uh, Marzi. Swindon good for the lead. Yeah, yeah, Swindon are really good, like I say, they're just keeping that nice little triangle here and uh, obviously Paddy for a one time, but like I say, we are a bit regimental, we know everyone, every team knows what we're going to do and uh, we just need to just think outside the box a little bit here. Padalek. Norton with a little touch, skates into the slot. 30 seconds of the first penalty, there's a goal. So a power play goal. And uh, scored by Glenn Billing with a one-timer high into the net. And the Phantoms, at last, are on the board with a power play goal. And there you go. Nice finish. Yeah, that's what we were just saying a second ago. Like I said, we always go down to the James at the bottom or the sisters or whatever, then go to the top for a one-timer for Norton. and we just switch it up a little bit and uh, we get that little goal. With something like 80 seconds left on this first power play of the second period, can they get set up? Well, not really. Here's Lydiard. Malasinski. Oh, dear me. Oh, saved by uh, Jordan Marr. I should imagine Cardiff, Sheffield have probably paid their players out of their contract till the end of the season. But that's just a little bit of unrest and we've got a chance here. And a that's a delightful top shelf finish. Phantoms two. There we go. Phantoms pull it back. And Ian Roderick, you're right. The Phantoms couldn't get it on the power play. But uh, Corey McEwen lifts the puck over Rennie Marr's shoulder. Four on three, not five on four. Oh, that'll hurt. Stepanek chance. Oh, post. Back out to Stepanek. Saved by Marr. It's four on three. Well, now it's four on four. <laughs> Padalek. Oh, Alice Padalek. Phantoms. Go ahead, goal! What a rip!
super. Yeah, that's a great goal from Paddy and uh, exhibition stuff there from Paddy, like going top cheese and uh, knocking that water ball up. But that's a great finish from a, a, a wily old veteran, as we want to call him. Four on four. Padalé gets the goal. Phantom scored three on answer. Aaron Nell, not the happiest man in Peterborough. That's offside to me with Jimmy Ferraro running offside, but nothing called. Oh, chance. Oh, Glenn Billing. Big opportunity. Oh, Padalé round the corner. I think Aaron now was screening his own netminder, was it now? It was. Yeah, that's a bit of a defensive lap. So obviously Billing was in front, Aaron didn't pick him up, and then a bit of puck watching there from Aaron, and there's uh, Padlek. Aaron L should have closed that gap, and that uh, screens the goalie, and uh, he won't be very happy when he sees that replay. Phantom score four and answered. Wildcats battling. And uh, the Phantom's looking for the pass there to set Stepanek away with 11 seconds of the penalty to go. Should be a big chance here. Lifted. Great save by Mark. Oh! Goal! Power play goal for the Wildcats. Three seconds left and it's rattled into the net. Pumps the water bottle. Let's just see that again. Yeah, that's uh, a, a lovely goal there. Van Cleef with his second of the evening. He does. He's a very good defensive player, and like I said, that's what we're going to miss next season. Especially if uh, Phantom's going to have a big hole to fill with Robbie not being here. Got three weights. Mar saves. There's another chance here. It's going to be fired. Saved by Mar. Chance. Jarvis Hunt. 22 seconds left. Let's see that again. So Hunt through the neutral zone, looks, picks his spot and uh, fires the puck into the corner of the goal past Tyler Perry. There's Lydiard skating back, does get a screen in, but you know, he's just in front of his netminder. Yeah, that's, that's a great shot, obviously Tyler Perry just slipped over there and obviously little Jarvison went down, had his head up all the way and that's a great finish from the young lad. Let's, uh, let's wait and see, but uh, surely going to have an effect on the, the way the, the players go at a game. Chance, Clark, shoot, oh! Through the five hole! Well, the, uh, the young guys battling there. A little kick. Well, dear me, the, uh, the netminder's uh, daydreaming there. He should have got that pad down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I say, a little Ross Kai, he's, he's been struggling all season to score and... Uh, he works really hard, the kid, and he's a he's a lovely young man, and he's he's going to have a good future in the game if he keeps working hard. And but that's a that's a really soft goal to give away. The Phantoms have won the last two games here in this old rink against the Swindon Wildcats. The series is shared three all. Chance, goal, goal for the captain. Aaron Nell needs to call a timeout, but for now, James Ferrara takes the plaudits. Nice way yeah. for James to go out. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? He's got a couple of assists, and uh, like I say, full credit to James. He's uh, got a big smile on his face, and you can see Paddy was just wide, just looking to, to make that pass. And like I say, that line, James, Paddy, and Bill have been outstanding for two seasons. Hazeldean looks up, it's out of the zone. Lydiard chase down, Glenn Billing. Oh, what a finish! Let's see that again, Billing. That's a, that's a quality finish, but like I say, uh, I feel sorry for good Tyler in there because he's, he's a nice kid and uh, obviously he's been chucking at the deep end and there's no support there, but that's a top quality finish in any league off the half boards Phantoms looking like they got their tails up they not played with this fluency for a while driven down low it's a goal 
Joe Hazeldean picks up the pieces. Where was this against Telford? Yeah, to be fair though, like I say, I think Swindon has switched off a little bit. The goalies have no help, and uh, like I say, the, the plus minus on Aaron's line is going to be pretty huge tonight. And uh, Slava's made a little bit of change. He's uh, put Nathan on with Stefan F and Corey and put Sisters on the third line, and we're scoring goals. From my money, it's time to put Robbie Farrar on one of the forward lines. Yeah, yeah, I'd definitely put him up there to try and get him a goal. But, you know, Robbie might, might risk one in from the blue line. But, like, Corey's just done. Corey McEwen scores number 10. Dear, oh dear. A few minutes ago, Ian Roderick on Twitter says this live stream got a Civic 18. It's a horror show. Um, it's certainly been a horror show for the Wildcats which I hope is what you meant. Seconds of the game, possibly of the season, of Robbie and James Ferrara's career. Uh, what great ambassadors they've been for the Phantoms and for hockey at this level. Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was the chance. Have won this, uh, the game. Uh, Robbie just sticks one wide. There you go. So, for me, Chris Jones, man of the match for the uh, for the Wildcats or Tyler Van Cleef. They both had decent games. You expect big games from those guys. Some of the young lads. They've done well? Yeah, they've done really well, do you know what I mean? They weren't on for many goals, and like I say, uh, we've got to develop. We've got older players, obviously James, and people like that who, who stop players and stop, stop, uh, stop playing. And we need these young kids to come through, and Slava's done that with Jarvis and Ross, and we need to develop, and I think all the leagues need to do that, really. But like I say, on the personal front, James and Robbie, do you know what I mean? Brilliant, and uh, the Swindon boys are given a real good pat here, which is uh, nice to see. Now it comes to the point we never wanted to be. It's time to say goodbye, potentially, to two Phantoms legends. Both Jimmy and Robbie have been great servants of the club, both on and off the ice, and it sure won't be the same without these two great characters around the team. So before James and Robbie come to say a few words, can we please give it up for James and Robbie Ferrara? Um, I'll probably just say a few. I think the first thing, I think on behalf of all the boys, and definitely myself and Robbie, is just a thank you to Swindon and their fans for making this happen tonight because they've shown a lot of dedication in tough times. You know, they did it for the right reasons. They didn't do it for us, but, uh, you know, hockey wins at the end of the day and everybody else is really important after that, so... Uh, Thank you. Um, just, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible and I, I'll definitely not say everything that I want to or feel inside, but I just a massive thank you and a massive round of applause please to everybody here today and everybody who's always supported uh, for, for a very, very long time now. So a huge round of applause to everybody here and all the fans. You're absolutely great. Thank you. And probably the, hard, the hardest thing is thank you to all these people here on the bench, our family and friends that have sacrificed so much for us to be here all the way up until the very end. Um, I, I, I don't know what to say, it's very hard to find the words, but I thank you for, for everything and thank you for being here tonight as well. What Jimmy said. So thanks everybody. Um, I can't... <laughs> I don't really know what else to say. Jimmy's covered everything. Um, you guys have all been amazing. Every year that we've played, every game that we've played, it's not always been good results, it's not always been highs, but you've always been there, and it's unbelievable. Um, and long may the support continue, hey? Keep the support going for these guys. I know they'll keep being successful for years to come, so thanks very much, everybody. It's great.